Oh, hey guys, welcome back, Felicity B. Hopefully the lighting's okay. I hope the lighting's okay. I don't know. But, found another crow feather. Now, you're looking at this one, and you're like, wow, that's not, that's, like, not super beautiful like the other ones. Now, this looked a lot worse when I found it. It was all scraggly, and I brought it home, and I actually rinsed it off a couple times, and I used some soap, you know, like dishwasher soap. Not dishwasher, uh, dishwashing soap. And, you know, gently rub that into it, and then I rinse that off. So I'm left with this. Now, I don't know if it got hit by the lawnmower, because they have, like, one of those riding lawnmowers at the park. Or it got, um, the poor crow had something horrible happen to it, and it was at the raggle from that. But it was Loki making a comment, because when I first started the channel... I was like, oh my god, I can, like, make all these Loki videos as many as I want, as often as I want, and it's gonna become this magical channel, and I'm gonna... And for a while, it kind of worked, and then I was like, I I need to quit, because when you when you run a YouTube channel, everybody and their uncle's got an opinion. It's not always flattering, and I, I am one of those people who never liked stressful stuff, and I was raised to be polite, so when I get feedback like it, I'm like... I need to walk away. And I will keep, you know, telling Loki, this is it. I'm walking away, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, you know, this is kind of something, you know, ever occurred to you that maybe you're, you were enjoying doing it because it's something good that you can do, like, for me and do for the community. I'm not Loki's mouthpiece in any way. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying my word is law and you have to listen to me and I'm the only authority. But it was like, it was something good that I could put out there and people could take it or leave it. Now, for me, that's really, really hard because you know the way I was raised. Everything I did, man, and this is just actually coming to me as I'm doing the video. Everything I did had to be validated or I was going to either get the crap beat out of me or the crap beat out of my brother or something was going to happen or you were going to go to bed without food or some, some fun thing was coming if every single thing you did didn't get validated. And I just realized that. Oh my God, I'm telling you this. I'm like, wow, that explains so much about my personality. And I did. I needed everything validated. If my father didn't validate it, or my mother didn't validate it, we were in trouble, okay? So, you have that going on enough in your formative years, and you know to be afraid of what you say, of what you don't say, of what reaction you're going to get. Yeah, later in life, you're going to be really interesting person to know. So, this is partly why I never had children. I'm like, I'm not becoming dad the second. So, I find this crow feather, and it's all beraggled and everything. And look, he's like, you know, you're you're currently a lot like a crow feather. Before, I was like, finally, like, I think you could tell, like, a week or so ago, or whenever it was, I'm bad with time. Um, I was starting to feel pretty good. I really don't have money coming in on either YouTube channel. Welcome to my life. But, you know, I do have a source of income, and... I was like, well, I can't keep constantly worrying about the future because either YouTube's going to start doing something for me or something's going to happen. I can't keep stressing out about it. Um, I have various disabilities, and every time I've tried to apply for disability, they have some reason they won't give it to me. Either I don't have enough tax money paid up over the last couple years, and paying taxes on what I am getting is not the right kind of tax to go into social security and it's like well i do work but unfortunately a lot of the sucky jobs i've had like youtube and um hub pages and brain fuse before that i was not making enough money except for like one year like a decade or so ago to even worry about paying taxes i'm like barely making anything okay and like right now i'm literally making nothing and you know, when you have physical disabilities, uh, some of this stuff that's open to other people is not open to you. I can't drive because of the eyesight. I can't go to the Dairy Queen. Yeah, I've tried. I've, you can't. I can't go and physically work at the Dairy Queen all day or physically work at the gas station. I tried working at the gas station. God bless the man. Ended in disaster. I only worked like a four-hour shift, and my body was so sore and so achy, and. It was like my fibromyalgia and everything else was catching up to me. And I was a lot slimmer then, too. So don't be posting in the comments, well, if you just lose some weight. No, I was, like, super skinny. Um, 
So, I realized that when I was feeling good, I was actually doing uh, what I felt like doing. And then as I've started feeling bad again, start feeling negative, I'm, I'm giving the ants free headspace. And I know I am. And Loki's like, hey, you can't, you can't give these two psychopaths free headspace because half the time you know they're lying to you. You see the evidence in front of you that they're lying. Like the one ant tells me she never uh, eats candy or drinks pop. Yet if you go to her house, there are always cartons and cartons of pop and there's always like a bowl of candy and everything. And she'll even offhandedly sometimes slip up and tell you she's had something. And then she'll be like, no, I didn't mean that. And it's like, she can do it, but she has some metabolism to do it. Bless her. She's like in her 70s or 80s. And she can still drink a pop or eat candy and be okay. I mean, wouldn't we all kill for that metabolism, right? Um, and the other aunt's the same way. She'll have stuff in the house too and she'll go, oh, it's, it, it's just for the kids. I never touch it. But you know they touch it from time to time. Now, for those of us that are bigger, we probably touch it more often than other people, or maybe we don't. Because I, I told my doctor, and this is getting back to Loki, I'm like, I really don't eat that much. Physically, I don't eat that much. And she said, well, it's not the amount of food you're eating, it's what you're eating. And I'm thinking, well, I only have like, maybe like a cup of milk or like one of those breakfast bars or something for breakfast. And I try to eat every three hours. And I really don't eat a ton of food. But then I thought back to when I was really, really thin. And I wasn't eating anything at all. I like maybe ate a quarter of the food I eat now. But then I also thought of something else. I'm going out now in the summer when it's in the 80s. And I could have never done that when I was like at the thinnest. I would have like blacked out. I couldn't even like want to stand on my porch. I'd have been like fainting. Now, yesterday I did have a spell. I told a friend I came back in and I was doing reading. And I thought I was fine, but I didn't rehydrate when I came home. And then I like had a spell and I'm like, oh yeah, you have to rehydrate, stupid. So <laughs> I rehydrated as soon as I came home and I'm pretty good. But I could have never done that at my thinnest because I had like nothing to go on. And I'm finding now like giving the ants headspace, I'm kind of running around and almost slipping back into that same extremism pattern of instead of walking, because I like to walk, and I do like to walk, and I like to get out there if I'm frustrated or bored or whatever, I actually usually go for a walk. I don't eat first, despite what some people might think. And I like going for a walk because I can go on an adventure and do things and like find the crow feathers. But back to Loki. He showed me this Beregel feather. And it was also the first day and the only day probably I'll see it this year that the whole entire parking lot at the pool was taken up. Which is unusual because usually even though they're open, no matter what time of day I walk by. And I don't walk at the same time every day. I walk whenever it feels cool and I think I can walk. Um... The whole parking lot was packed. In fact, there were people having to park in other parts of the park and walk up to the pool, which greatly angered them. So some people were making their own parking spaces, which, you know, the pool uh, will tell them, hey, you have to get out of the water and go move the car that you just parked in the middle of the driveway or whatever. You can't just park wherever you want. Now, they didn't, they didn't mind if people parked in the grass, like off the way you drove up. Or if they parked out of the way somewhere, or like on the shoulder of one of the lanes or something. But they did mind if you parked right in the middle where people actually have to go to get in and out. And people couldn't move their vehicles. So, it, it just kind of occurred to me. I'm thinking, you know, if these people... Because you kept hearing announcement after announcement after announcement of, Will the owner of... Please move your car. And I'm thinking, you know, if these people had just done the right thing in the first place you know parked and walked up to the pool one they won't be moving their car and two i know this pool because i've lived in this area all my life if you give them sass if they would have walked up and go i'm not moving my car they would have kicked them out so you would have been out what you paid to get into the pool <laughs> you would have been kicked out so it's like why didn't they just do the logical thing yeah it's hot but i'm out here walking anyhow and to, they're walking to a nice pool and, you know, they're going to be in the pool and there's like the snack shack in there and there's usually music playing, stuff like that. And 
why would you like risk giving all that up just because you don't want to walk a distance? I thought, well, that's that's kind of like our lifestyle now, isn't it? We we want to have like everything. So these people were like parking everywhere, like parking where they knew they were like blocking four other cars in. And of course, if somebody needed to get out, they were like, hey, um, they need to move their car because I can't get out. And that, along with the feather, made me think of, well, you know, I'm kind of doing that to myself. I'm kind of blocking myself in. And look, he's just letting me process all this. He will stand back and let you process stuff sometimes. And I thought, well, I'm kind of doing that to myself because I'm letting the ants get under my skin, even though I haven't talked to them for about a week. It's just like how long it's been buzzing around in my head. And I'm letting kind of the sneaky, tactical things they like to do, like give me clothes that's way too small for me. And say, well, you can lose weight. I'm worried about you. Blah, blah, blah. Even if you are worried about somebody, the way to help them is not to buy them clothes like ha literally half their size and say you can diet down into them. Because we all know the only way for me to do it is to go to extremism and I won't do it anymore. I'm like, look, I, if I'm going to have a heart attack, I'm going to have it not eating and working out four hours a day is how I'm going to have it. I'm not going to have it eating a moderate diet and doing light exercise every day. I'm probably not going to have a heart attack doing that. But if I start abusing my body again and working out to the point where I can't move, yeah, that would that would be heart attack city. But so many people believe that you have to be whatever size to be healthy. I could have been horrible inside. I could have been one of the walking dead when I was really thin. And we don't know because, you know, nobody wants to go under like radiation and everything every day to get like a x-ray and get all these tests every day so we don't know what kind of shape I was actually in when it was thinner my blood pressure didn't change um sugar didn't change anything like that no matter what size I've been I've always been blessed it's always been constant it's like it's never gone up or anything and I've never gotten diabetes or anything so um a lot of it I believe is genetics and I think a lot of it is choosing what to let into your life which is kind of what Loki's whole point was. I know this has been like a lot of me telling you the story, but um, one of the points he would make, he was making to me and he would make to you guys is, you know, a lot of times we get like his feather was. I mean, this feather was all big raggled and bad looking. Now it's just drying out. You can see it's fluffing out a little bit, but it does not look as be raggled as when I found it. I actually had to take the time out and, you know, rinse it very gently and clean it out and it might not look perfect it might not look like um and by perfect I mean it might not look like every other feather I've shown you but it, it looks like a feather and it is what it is and just like the situation at the pool today was what it was either people would obey the rules and you know drive like literally 10 seconds if that like down a little hill and park there or maybe down the hill and around the curve and park there and then they could stay at the pool all day or they could have decided to be a maverick and park in front of everybody else's car and then be told to leave the pool as soon as one of those people needed to leave i think these people are thinking in the back of their head well i plan to stay all day everybody else is going to stay all day too and no people go you know people go to the pool they go for a while and then they get tired of swimming they don't want to eat the snack shack there's really nothing else to do so they go home so it was kind of this message today was kind of like we can push ourselves way too hard like i know i feel even though i'm running two channels and i'm doing my exercise and i'm maintaining my home and i'm doing all this other stuff i feel like i don't do enough because obviously I have time to take naps during the day. I should be working 10 times more. And my solution used to be to work out four hours a day because then I'm doing something. And look, he's like, no, you're beraggled as it is. Um, you're not going to go out and work four hours, for, work out four hours a day. And you're not going to then, I was even thinking of opening a third channel. He's like, no, you're not, you know, you are running ragged, running too, you're not going to open a third channel and think it's going to magically make things better to give yourself more work. You're not doing that. So one of the things looking can teach you is to accept your limits 
and that they aren't a bad thing. We can't all do the same amount of work. Maybe what I'm doing to some people watching or listening to the sound of my voice, maybe what I'm doing, they're like, oh my god, you're running two channels and working out and maintaining your house and doing all the adulting stuff. How are you doing it? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And some people might be able to do far more and not even break a sweat. We all have different levels. We all have different limits. My aunts don't get why I do the YouTube. And it's like, well, because one, I enjoy it. I like keeping mentally active. It keeps me from going utterly insane. I mean, I could be sitting watching TV for the next couple of years, but I wouldn't have accomplished anything. And I told them, you know, I, I like trying to do things for myself. I said, you know, the government won't help me, won't get me on disability, no matter how many times I've tried to even try with a lawyer. But this way I can at least say, hey, if worse comes to worse and misfortune hits me, at least I tried to help myself. You know, at least I tried. Unfortunately, the difference between December of last year and now of now is like, vastly different because YouTube keeps changing but you know at least I tried and no guys this is an announcement for Patreon I don't think it's your fault YouTube's no longer paying me um but you know Loki's never said don't try <coughs> excuse me and he's never said never taken the side of the aunties and said yeah I, I liked it when you were blacking out he's actually asked me in this is kind of the point of the video. You know, how do you feel overall? And it's like, you know, I actually... And people that are naturally thinner maybe not understand this. You don't feel like a big person. You usually don't feel like this big behemoth blob or whatever people see you as. You feel like a normal human being. I mean, I, I, I have not reached a point where I can't do anything. I can still go for walks. If I wanted to go swimming, I could go swimming, and I'm, I've just, I used to go swimming as a little girl, and I'm like, I really would almost like, and not just to have it for myself, but like to go to a pool where it could just be almost, I guess, like a YMCA pool where you could swim lanes or something, and it wouldn't be a bunch of people horsing around and stuff like that. It's not that I'm like ant anti-social or anything, but... At the same time, I would like to be able to relax and just take my time and kind of have it quiet. I see a noisy pool and I'm like, mm, no, I'm okay. Uh, like, I would maybe go in the evening, one, when it's cooler, and two, you know, when there's would hopefully be less people and, like, be people that want to swim there. And sometimes pools will do that. They'll have, like, dedicated hours for, like, seniors or, like, people that actually want to swim for exercise as opposed to, you know, people going horsing around. And that's fine. I don't care. Like, do whatever you want in the pool. But, like, for me, typically, people... At, I had a friend ask, well, you live right in town. Why don't you go to the pool all the time? I'm like, well... You know, that's that's never been my thing. To go into, like, a pool when everybody's real noisy. I never liked it as a little girl, either. I always liked swimming classes in times when the pool was open. And you could, like, kind of swim and be by yourself and think. It's like, I why well, I don't jog with, like... Yeah, jog. Walk with 20 people. It kind of like being out on my own, doing my own thing. So, hopefully that helped. And it's okay. I think Loki's lesson today for us is it's okay to have limitations. It's okay to realize when you're really beraggled and you need to stop. Kind of clean yourself up because, yeah, you all got the lesson. Stop, kind of clean yourself up. Take a breather. Realize that even once you've done that, you might not fit somebody else's idea of perfection. This might not look like the big boffo crow feather some people might long for. But you still have something that's important to you, and that's the point. Um, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all world. So it's okay with Loki to have limitations to recognize them. And he wants us to recognize them. He doesn't want us to work ourselves into the ground or starve ourselves to death or go out and get five credit cards and live far beyond our means and then suddenly be in the, you know, debtor's prison because I can't pay for the credit cards. Okay, I hope that helps. I know it was a long roundabout story, but sometimes when I'm telling you guys a story, I'm telling myself the story too. I'm working stuff out as I'm talking. So sometimes that's why these videos get so long. But if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe. I hope that helped. Um, but really, you know, anytime you have a problem, 
Uh, you should honestly talk to Loki first. It's okay to ask for a sign. It's okay to say, I'm having problems working through this. Because that's what today's walk was all about. I'm like, I'm just, I'm done. I'm, I'm going for a walk. And thankfully, it came to a good resolution. So, I hope you guys like what you see. If you do, like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.